as I've told you, I've wanted to get a chamber sealer for quite some time now, but uh, my wife didn't want me to spend the money that they cost, so I actually contacted Vivor to see if they had any available for a video. And a couple days later, they actually sent me out this DZ260C digital vacuum sealer. And um, you can see it came, it was really well packed. Look at the thickness of the cardboard honeycomb to use on it and all that packaging around it so they did do a good job and I will tell you this is an extremely heavy package I think it probably weighs over 70 pounds 75 pounds so um you know it's not a lightweight little thing it's it's really a big heavy pack well made and I always wanted to get one but I wanted a 12 inch seal bar on it and that put the price range of the other available ones up oh, well over a thousand dollars and looking at this one, this one actually, uh, there it is, I'm packing, but it came really, you know, nice package. But it also has a 12 inch, about 12 and a little bit more than that, 12 and a quarter seal bar. Which really is um, required on one of these chambers to get the most out of it, I think. So let's get this unpackaged here. And uh, there's a little hole down to hold the cover down when you're not using it came with the oil for the pump this is an oil type pump on it and it also came with the instructions power cord and an extra seal bar there to replace the existing seal if that should burn out and it's got a little spacer pan in there everything really is uh looks well made i'm pretty surprised everything's really you know nicely welded ground deburred and um really a good quality from what i'm seeing here so that's pretty much what it looks like and it does come with a nice uh, circuit breaker type switch to turn it on and off so that's you know another good heavy duty thing and a decent thickness power cord so you know everything looks like that should be good and let's look around and here you can get a look at the back of it now the first thing you have to do when you receive this is remove this back cover to put oil in the pump the pump is shipped dry and um, it has to be added later and they're you know a little bit rough around the edge of that back cover it feels like they saw cut it but it's really not bad and I'm surprised to see two big gas cylinders in there for opening the lid and um, all the wiring and everything looked to be pretty decent you know well routed and tight connections and everything else so now here's the cap that you have to remove on the pump. I first screwed off the uh, top of the filter and then I finally went back and got the cap out. But once you remove that, you have access to that little fill plug. Cut the tip off the oil bottle and you want to get that level in the sight class there between the one half, the little lines that are one half and a three quarter amount full according to the instructions there. So I'm a little bit over to half full there, so I'm going to leave that. And then when you put it back on, you have to make sure that little O-ring is in place there. It kind of falls off as you're trying to screw it back in, but, you know, you just have to hold it on there and make sure that's there to seal it so oil doesn't come out when it runs. So there it is, and you can really see how big that vacuum pump is. It really amazed me and um, how well everything seems to be wired in and easy to service it looks like if something should go wrong. So let's put the backpack on there, just four screws. And you can see it's about uh, 18 inches deep there. And I'm going to move it over here by my other uh, sealer. I still need this one for vacuuming jars and some other processes, but my dehydrator and um, the temporary stand for this right now for testing it. And uh, you can see it's about 16 inches wide there. And. If you look at the height, the air comes in about 16 inches tall, too. So it is a really big unit when you uh, look at it. It's extremely heavy when you go to move it. I figured I'd open it up see if it'll take jars. And it turns out it will just take the small jelly jars there, the shorter ones. And that's about it. But I didn't really expect to do jars in it anyway. So let's turn it on here and... Uh, it's got a couple digital displays you have to set. One is the amount of time for the vacuum, one is the amount of time for the seal, and one is the amount of time for the uh, resting. 
Now, pretty much every re review you see of these things, somebody puts a tin can in a bag, or soda can in a bag, aluminum one, puts it in the sealer, um, pulls vacuum on it, and F it. Crushes the can, they say, okay, it's a good one. That doesn't really mean anything to me, but I'm just going to do it anyway, just for the fun of it, to show you the power and how these vacuum machines work. And it was set at 35 seconds pull down time. You can see the vacuum is really going down nice and smooth. And nothing's happening in there because it's just removing air and everything is equalized in there right now. Until you let the atmospheric pressure back in, nothing happens. So then it um, comes to a point where it pumps down and it seals the bag and then it lets the air back in. And there's the power of the vacuum. It's pretty amazing. I don't think I could do that by hand. So if you see what it did to the key in there. So I just did that for fun, but that doesn't mean anything about how good a machine is. But you can see it did get a really nice seal on there. And this is using one of the old bags. I don't have my chamber bags yet. This is one of these, uh, your standard quilted Abbott Armor bags. So now I'm waiting for my bags to come. I'm, I'm going to play a little bit. I made up a bunch of these uh, ice bags. I put two cups of water in a six, one of six by ten uh, pint bags, I think it was. And uh, just have to kind of set it there in the seal bar. And you can see just how easy this thing is to work. You just... Uh, start closing it down and the vacuum actually turns on pulls it down here you can see the water is actually boiling which you know is a good indicator that you do have decent vacuum on it and a minute later you actually have a nice ice pack um, and we also had some uh, butternuts we we're gonna cook up to make some soup today so my wife cooked up a couple extra ones here and there you can see we just pull them out of the root cellar, cut them in half, clean them out. And um, I did get my bags finally. I got two of the three types that I ordered. The other ones are still somewhere in limbo. But these are a three mil thick bag now I'm going to be using. At the same time, I found some plastic cups that fit in the bags. I figured I'd try to make some sleeves to keep the bags from getting dirty in this seal area when you load them. And uh, actually in the end, I'll show you they did work good. And you didn't have to buy anything. A couple old beer cups laying around. And, uh, you know, you got nice protectors. So once that squash comes out of the oven, it's cooled off. You put it in a blender and you um, put two cups in each bag. That's what my wife pretty much uses for every recipe that she makes. Two cups of the butternut. Usually it goes into those big plastic containers in the freezer that don't stack well. But here we're going to try the bags. So there it is. Two cups in the bag. And I will warn you that what you're about to see is um, not what I expected. Uh, there were some, some major issues here, so be prepared. So this is my first time trying butternut. I loaded in there, and you, know, you see it's really easy. I like that seal bar in the back on this one, too. It's really a nice location. But I put it down, and I left the vacuum time on the 35 seconds that it came at. And all of a sudden, I'm watching this uh, butternut, and something start to go wrong in the bag. You could just kind of see that something's going to happen, and all of a sudden, the butternut started expanding like uh -oh. when you put a marshmallow in a vacuum machine. What a stinking mess it was making. I could not believe it. I'm just sitting there waiting to see what happens, and uh, definitely I blew that one. You know, what a mess it was to clean up, but I did learn from it. That uh, butternut, when you process it, seems to hold air. And when you pull the air out with a vacuum, it makes the stuff get bigger. So I decided I'm not going to give up, and I set the time down to 8 for the next bag of it. Just so I got to a point where I was pulling vacuum out of the chamber, but not out of the butternut itself. So, you know, I don't know what's going to happen here when I first started, but actually in the end, you can see it um, turned out. By not putting a lot of vacuum on it, I was able to process it. So you're going to have to work out times for whatever you're doing to, you know, do it right. But, you know, I didn't want to give up. And, uh, you know, that one, you can see it really did come out nice and uh, worked good. And it'll pack right down in the freezer, a nice little flat pack. So 
So here we go again. I'm going to do another two cups of butternut here. And this time I actually set the time to 10 seconds. I'm going just a little bit more to see if I can, you know, try to get all the air out of here. But, um, you know, you see you just have to set that bag over the seal strip there which really when you're looking at it in the back there I, I i don't know most of the other ones are in the front but i really like the back one so this was running at 10 seconds and actually no problem whatsoever worked good and um these bags are amazing they just pack so nice in the freezer what you do is you take one and you put it on the bottom on a flat spot and then you put another one that's frozen on top of it while this one freezes and they come out perfectly flat. So there it is. Um, butternut, which we've never been able to pack up before. We've always had to use those expensive plastic containers. And of course we had some of the soup left over that my wife made. So I'm going to try that. I uh, figured I'll try a little bit of everything on this just to see how it works. And um, it's pretty impressive. It, it, everything worked great so far. So I'm just going to put one serving of soup in the bag to start with, just to get an idea if I'm going to make a mess or what's going to happen. But it turned out in the end that the um, butternut actually, uh, once you make a soup out of it, I guess the air pockets in it get filled up and it no longer expands. So you can, you know, just run it with a little bit longer vacuum time. One thing I do want to make, though, is a tapered uh, ramp for that chamber. Just so uh, the bags are sit tapered and they don't um, have that sharp bend in them when you load them in there like that. So there we go. This time we're running, I think I ran about 20 seconds on this one here. And another perfect seal. Now, the last bag I'm doing is a couple servings in it. It's a, pretty much a bag full now that I know it's going to work. So I took that uh, little spacer out. And I'm going to do it like this. And like I said, I'm probably going to make a little ramp to put in there. But um, otherwise, that's the only thing I could find that I you know, wasn't perfect with this machine so far. Just so easy to use. And it's... Uh, just about as quick as my other um, food saver was. But it does a better job. Look at that nice seal on there. And uh, I've got liquid in that bag. So now I'm going to try some dry stuff. Uh, we buy these beans in kind of bulk at our Amish store. And when we make chili up, we need one pound bags of them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to... Uh, well, if only I could uh, read the scale. That's what brain fog does to you. But there we go. I'm going to take and make up just one pound bags of the beans for batches of chili. So I can just grab one and throw in the pressure cooker without having to measure it out or weigh it out or anything. So again, I'm using these 3 mil um, 6 by 10 vacuum chamber pouches that I bought. And so far, they, they seem to work good for everything. Um... I was a little worried that they're a little thinner than the other bags. And the only difference was um, I had to just set the seal time down. And this is why you want at least a 12 inch seal bar. I wanted to show you this. Um, you can do two 6 inch bags side by side and cut the time in half, which really, you know, increases the production and, you know, saves energy and everything else. So, you know, it does take a little bit of lining up to make sure that they're on the seal bar. But the uh, cycle time and everything else turns out being the same. And I forgot to turn it on. Let's turn it on and watch it run. So there you can see, you know, the 12-inch bar is really something that I think is a requirement on these. I see a lot of them with 10-inch bars and stuff, but... Um, I guess they're just for home use where you're just going to do a, one or two things every now and then. And there you see, they came out hard as a rock. They're better than my other sealer could ever pull them down. And those bags do have a little tear spot there so you can rip them open once you're ready to use them. So, you know, did a good job. And let's see, I'm trying my funnel on this one. And I'm going to just do a bunch of these now, two at a time, just to... Um, 
get them done. It's pretty amazing that uh, big pump in here is a lot quieter than that little pump in the old food saver there. Yeah, it really does. Oh man, look at those things. Oh, just how packed down they come. There's no air at all in there. Oh, another batch of them now. So I did um, eight batches of chili there. I had eight pounds of beans and uh, all set for this winter. Now I had a bulk package of beef sticks and I decided I was going to just try seeing how it does sealing up some of them. Just to keep them fresh longer while you eat the first couple of them. So again, you can see the, you know, just put the bag over the seal bar there. And close the lid and it starts automatically, runs automatically and um, no problem at all. Opens up at the end, and boy, they came out nice. They look like store packed. They really did a good job on them. Okay, so now we bought our holiday shrimp from Costco. It's a four pound bag, and it's a crummy bag. They put them in, they've got some ice on them and stuff from the way they were flash frozen. So I'm going to break this up into um, some 12, 12 ounce bags, about actually. Um, turned out eight of these shrimp is a meal for the two of us. I mean, we could eat more, but. Why be greedy? So we'll put eight in each bag. And I'm going to start just running one bag. Just I'm a little worried that the shrimp have got some sharp tails on them and stuff that they might pop through the bag. So decide to try one first. And again, just load it in there, close the cover, and everything's automatic after that. Just go back and uh, pick it out when it's done. And I did run these for 30. 30 seconds on the um, the vacuum pull down time so I am boring you with this slow pull down on it but still it's just as fast as the um, our food saver was in the end the seal time is so much quicker and there we go it's all done it opens up and actually it did pull down nice nothing poked through everything sealed looks good to go So now it's time to do the rest of them, and I'm just going to load them up in here. And again, I'm going to make a little bit of a ramp thing to put to hold them up there, I think, to help keep the seal in place. But with the 12-inch bar, again, you can see just how, um, how easy it is to do doubles. And, uh, at least, you know, at least they'll be sealed good for, you know, to last for a couple months now. Really amazes me though. I was I didn't expect this thing to you know do everything so perfect. I've had no problems with it after a week. Uh, everything's been working good. Um, good seals. Uh, it did. I did have to you know just shorten the seal time up for these thinner bags, and it does the thicker bags with a little more time, and they all come out perfect. All right. So at Costco, we also bought some hamburger. It's down to three twenty-nine a pound. It went down a dollar a pound a couple weeks ago. So we decided to pick up another six-pound package, and we break that up. Now the only thing I have are these eleven by ten bags. I didn't get my uh, medium-sized ones yet. They're still in limbo somewhere in Amazon. And my wife's just going to break this into about one pound. Uh, chunks there and we're going to put one in each of these bags. You can see these three mil bags are nice because you can also fold the um, the lip back on them so you don't get any juice on it or anything. And they're really easy to do. Just flip it inside out while you're loading it and then flip it back to seal it. And these have the um, wow. the 11 inch side is open which makes them really nice for loading and stuff. So I'm just going to flatten them down a little bit once I get the meat in them all. And you can see this is an 11 inch bag, so um, it's nice to load, but you know, if you have a 10 inch sealer, you're out of luck being able to seal it. And one thing that I did notice is with hamburger, usually when you use the food saver, it, it sucks all the juice out of it, and tries to get up in the seal. With this sealer, you'll see in a second, it actually forces the juice back inside of the meat and it looks like it's going to be uh, much better for storing the meat in the freezer for a longer term. So again I ran the full cycle on there 
and there it is. Did a really good job. No air in it, and you can see no blood sucked out of the meat. It really um, does a nice job. So I'm just going to finish up the other five of these now. And each and every one. Everything I did in this machine came out perfect. I just can't believe it. I was expecting to have problems, but... Um, so there's the hamburger all ready to go down in the freezer. Now, for that pork recipe that we do that has the cider in it, you need two cups of cider. Well, my wife puts two in it anyway. And when you can get fresh cider, you're best off to buy it and put it in the freezer. Now, in the past, you always had to get containers, put it in and stuff. Don't worry about that. But with these bags and this vacuum sealer, I'm going to put two cups of fresh apple cider into that three mil bag there. See how good that funnel works? Keep it clean. I tell you what, I recommend getting some of these cups if you do a lot of the sealing. And then I'm only going to do one at a time because I don't know what's going to happen here. Because, that's you know, it's really full. And same thing, I'm going to pull it down for, I think I went back to 30 seconds on this one. And the good thing about this uh, machine is you just have up and down buttons to uh, change the time. You don't have to dig through menus or anything. It's all right there. Just simple push buttons and you can watch it change. It really is easy to use. So, there we go. It's starting to kind of bubble a little bit. It doesn't quite boil like the water, but it does, um, you know, pull the vacuum down pretty good. And again, a perfect seal. And uh, there's two cups of apple juice for our, using our pork roast in the winter. And these, like I said, they lay flat in the freezer and they freeze nice and stack nice and um, be real easy to take care of. So here's another another two cup bag. Do one more just to to bore you. And speed up the vacuum time, and there you can see it. Another another perfect seal. Um, another nice bag for the freezer. So, you know, pretty much everything I threw at this machine, it did with no problems whatsoever and passed with flying colors. So, you know, what I'm seeing with this machine is if you're looking for a, a chamber sealer and you don't want to spend a lot of money, I mean, they're going to give me a coupon for a discount code on it, and that brings it down to under $350 for this unit. Um, I don't think you can beat that price or, you know, even if something did go wrong with it in the future, it's... Uh, it looks like it's fairly easy to service and fix and these uh, you know it does come with the spare parts here and oh yeah or that extra pound of meat that I didn't freeze well we're having spaghetti and meatballs tonight and in the manual it says for maintenance you have to change oil in that vacuum pump every 800 hours so I don't know how true that is but you know it looks like that's going to take a while to do and um Everything else, uh, you know, if you have to change that seal strip, that's pretty easy to do, too. So, looks like it'll work. And be careful in your settings if you do butternut. I found out that the hard way and what a mess I had to clean up. But, you know, pretty much I've been playing with this thing for a week now and throwing a little bit of everything at it. And I have had zero problems or zero failures. So, I'm going to, you know, give this machine a thumbs up and uh, say it's probably a really good place to start with for a chamber sealer. And if you follow along with my videos, I'll be giving this thing a real good long-term test. Um, you know, next summer, once the garden's out, I've got a lot of stuff that uh, I'll be trying in it. And we'll get to, you know, really see how it stands up and how long it lasts. But, you know, so far, no problems whatsoever. And it is simple to use. Those little plus and minus buttons. No menus to dig through or anything like that. It doesn't even look that bad. It looks pretty nice. So I'd like to thank Beaver for um, actually letting me use this and try it out. And uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe.